Hello and welcome to Cataclysm University. My name is Vormithrax and this is course number 16 where we'll be discussing wounds, the bleed, bite, and infection wounds in particular, and how they work and what to do about them. So the world of Cataclysm is a very dangerous place and should you find yourself engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with any of the denizens, there's a very good chance you're going to have wounds inflicted upon you. So. The obvious best thing to do is not to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat if you can at all avoid it. So try to kill things at range if possible. Throw things at them, shoot them with guns, bows and arrows. Lots of different ways to manage it. Use reach attack weapons um, like spears and uh, pole axes and things like that. Pretty much do anything you can to keep the enemy at arm's length. Keep them away from you so that you do not have wounds inflicted upon you. Now, if that's not possible for some reason, and they do get within hand-to-hand -hand combat range, the next best thing is to have a good defense, uh, lots of dodge skill, and or lots of layering of armor and clothing. So when you do get hit in a location, the game checks to see how much protection you have at that location. It sees how much damage is inflicted, and then it starts to subtract from that damage based on how much uh, armor value you've got against cutting and bashing and so on. So, just having enough clothing and armor could also prevent you from getting infected if you can prevent any damage from coming through. So, have good clothing and armor. Now, let's say the worst thing happens, and they get within range, they bite you, it gets through all your clothing and armor, and inflicts a wound. What does that mean? Well, there's a few different types, and what I want to talk about first is the color coding system that tells you what's going on. So, if you look up in this section here, you already know probably about the hit point bars and how those work. If a wound gets past your clothing and armor and inflicts any damage, then next thing to look at is right here. And you'll notice different colors for the different hit locations. So gray, like the head, legs, are undamaged or normal condition. So there's no effect you need to worry about. But you'll notice our torso is yellow, our left arm is blue, and our right arm is red. So there's actually another color, which is green, which I'll show you momentarily, but these are important to know about. Yellow indicates multiple conditions at one location. So we've actually got two problems on our torso. Um, we've got a blue, which is a bite indication on our arm, and red, which is a bleed indication on our right arm. So left arm bitten, right arm bleeding, torso has multiple things wrong. So how can we get more details about these? Well, just open up your character sheet, Shift 2 to do that, and you can see the detailed information right in here. So we can see our right arm is bleeding, and our torso is also bleeding. We've got an infected torso, so that is where the dual conditions come from. We've got an infected torso and a bleeding torso. That's why it's yellow color, because it's got multiple conditions. And as we look down, we've also got a painful bite on our left arm. So those are the different conditions we've got. So we've got to get rid of these, and how do we go about that? Well, let's talk about bleeding first. So I want to concentrate on the right arm location. So um, right here it says bleeding right arm, and the bleeding status is common with animals in particular. Um, wolves and bears are really good at inflicting bleeding wounds. There are lots of other creatures and monsters that will inflict, inflict bleeding, but commonly when I'm in the early game, those are the ones that are usually causing me to bleed is the uh, the animal type monsters. Um, so you can see that we're bleeding here. You can also see here a message that we're losing blood and there's also a blood streak following us around as we move. So if I close out of there and I step down one and step over one, so we've got a blood trail following along behind us. Now because of the way I set up this test, you're not seeing it, but usually when you have a bleeding effect, whatever location is bleeding will be constantly losing hit points from the hit point bar. Right now, because of the way I set up the test, the hit point bars aren't going to change, so don't worry about that, but just be aware that that is the consequence of a bleeding condition. While that bleeding is occurring, these hit point bars will be constantly lowering and taking damage until eventually you either die, if it's your head or torso, or you lose the um, use of that limb when it hits zero and you'll have to get a splint and heal it up over a long period of time to get it back into fighting condition. All right, so that is how you prevent bleeding, how you uh, know that you are bleeding, so how do you get rid of it? Well, there's a couple of ways. If I open up my inventory, the options that I want to point out are that um, 
Oops, let me bring this back up real quick. Uh, I need to get one more item. Alright, so open up the inventory again. So, bandages are by far the easiest ways to get rid of bleeding. And I'm going to grab one more item. Okay, um, so the two I'll point out are bandages, rags, and first aid kits. So three items. Um, so you've got a bleeding status. You need to stop the bleeding. How do you do it? Well, the best way is the bandage. So if we open this up and we look at the bandage details, right here is a healing section. You'll heal some hit points. It's a minor amount of healing to a hit point location. That doesn't represent a bar. It's a numerical value, but these are really low healing numbers. So you won't really see much of effect to a hit point bar if you're just applying bandages, but you will get some minor amount. So if you've got tons of them, feel free. But the biggest thing you're looking at is right here. Chance to heal is a percent, bleeding 90%. So, if you apply a bandage to a location that's bleeding, you have a 90% chance of stopping the bleeding with a bandage. Now, that's as opposed to a rag, which has a 50% chance to stop the bleeding. And as opposed to a first aid kit, which has a 95% chance to stop bleeding. So, pick with the one that's the most useful to you. If you don't have any of the better ones, you can just grab a rag, which you can get from chopping up clothing, bedding, lots of different things in the game. You can disassemble or break in order to get rags. So in a pinch, just start applying rags. And you might have to do it a few times in order to succeed at it, but uh, that will work in an emergency. But if you got bandages around, that's the much more cost-effective way of doing it. And if you absolutely have to and you have no other choice, you can use a first aid kit. But I wouldn't recommend it if you have any other option. All right, so what happens when you do it? So let's use the bandage as an example. So we're going to pick the bandage. We're going to say to activate it. And you'll see here, it knows we have two different locations that are currently bleeding, the torso and the arm. It will show you that any change to the hit point bars right now, because of the way I've set it up and the full bars, you're not going to see a change here. But you just pick the location. So I'm going to pick the right arm. And you can see here, it says you fail to stop the bleeding. <laughs> we actually failed with our 90% chance to stop the bleeding. Um, that's interesting, but it did go away. So I think the fail is the other location that's still bleeding. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and do another method. I'm going to use the action menu this time. So if you've got a key bound to the hot key or a hot key bound to the action menu, just press that and it brings up this list. And you'll notice here you can apply a bandage directly from this location. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to apply a rag. We're going to try the 50-50 chance. We're going to use the rag on our torso. And it shows that uh, your wound still hurts, you fail to stop the bleeding, and it's still yellow. So let's try again. Oh, I only had one rag. We'll go ahead and use the bandage on our torso. And it's still bleeding, really. All right. Try again. There we go, finally. Wow, that was a really bad rolls on my part. But you'll notice our torso is now changed from yellow to green. So it no longer has dual negative effects. So the yellow color indicate multiple locations, multiple problems with that location. Now it's down to just a single problem. So it's green indicating it's got an infection. All right, so our bleeding is now taken care of. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is the bite wound. So currently we have a bite on our left arm. So monster, zombie, doesn't matter. Anything can cause a bite wound. It's not a zombie virus type of wound. It's just an infected wound. So dirty conditions, um, just nasty bacteria and um, horrible sanitary conditions means that any kind of wound you take has a chance to become a bite wound. Six hours after you receive a bite wound, if it's still on you, it will then transition to the infection. So this left arm condition, six hours after that bite occurred, it will turn into this kind of infection. So it's a transition. You go from bite to infection to flat out dead. So the time frames to be aware of are six hours for a bite, at which time it turns into an infection. You then have 24 hours to get rid of the infection. At the end of 24 hours, if you are still infected, you fall over dead. Just flat dead. Not hit point damage, nothing else. You just fall over dead. So. Be aware of those time frames. You have 30 hours total from the time you get a bite in order until you actually die from it. So six hours as a bite, 
24 hours as an infection, and then you're gone. All right, so what do you do? Well, first, don't get bit or infected. Like I said before, try to avoid direct combat and use ranged weapons. Try to have good armor and clothing layers so that they don't penetrate. And if nothing else works, then you've got to get rid of these. So how do you do it? Well, for the bite wound, you've got a few choices, actually. The first one I want to mention is we'll go back to our inventory. There are a few different items that will get rid of a bite wound. The first one that you can use is the disinfectant. And you'll notice here it has a healing message. And you'll see chance to heal a bite, 95%. So if you just pour some disinfectant on the wound, that will clean it out and it will get rid of the bite. So 95% chance for a single use of disinfectant to clear up the bite indication. And the next one is the first aid kit. And you'll see here, bite 99%. So I don't recommend you use a first aid kit unless you absolutely have to, but it does have a 99% chance to clear up the bite. And then you also have Royal Jelly, which will get rid of it. This is kind of like a magical healing item. Um, they're kind of hard to come by, so it's pretty rare. You won't often have a lot of these around. There are places in the world they're more likely to show up, and I'll let you figure out where. Um, but if you happen to have any Royal Jelly and you absolutely need it, you'll notice here it says it is useful for curing all sorts of afflictions. So you can use that as well. So by far, though, the most common one is going to be the disinfectant, followed by, hopefully not, but if you have to, a first aid kit. But there is another way. So you can also try to cauterize a bite wound to clear out the infection, or clear out the, the bite status. So the way you do that is you have to have some kind of a heated metal object in order to cauterize. So you can use hot plates, you can use soldering irons. The more common method earlier game is going to be just a knife with a fire source. You can heat the knife up and then apply it to the bite and it has a 50% chance of clearing up the bite wound. So it is a coin flip, 50-50. If it succeeds, you'll take some pain, you'll take some damage to that location, but the bite wound will disappear. If it fails, you still take the pain, still take the damage, and it increases the speed at which the infection is going to happen. So I think it rolls the clock forward about 45 minutes. So of your six hour time frame, it will accelerate 45 minutes if you fail the cauterization. So the way to do it though is a couple ways. You can do the action menu again. If you do that, whatever key you've got bound to the action menu, you'll notice here, cauterize a wound. So if you meet the conditions, meaning you have a metal object like a knife and you have a fire source available, you'll get this cauterize wound choice. You just pick it and it'll ask you what you want to cauterize. And the blue one is the one that we would want to cauterize. And that would try, it would do the, the coin flip to try to clear up the left arm bite. So I'm going to hold off on that for the moment. And like I said, experiment. There are other ways to do it or other combination of objects that might be able to cauterize. So just check the action menu, check your inventory, and activate certain items and see what you've got. So for this purpose, I'm just going to use an antibiotic to clear it up though. Or I mean a disinfectant. So I'm going to apply the disinfectant. We're going to activate it. And then we're going to pick number three. And there we go. You use your disinfectant. And you can see here that it is no longer colored blue. So we have successfully cleaned out the bite wound with our disinfectant. So that's going to be the most common way you get rid of that. If you don't have disinfectant available as a last ditch, then I would recommend cauterization. And if that fails, you're just going to have to deal with the infection, which is the next stage. So six hours after you're bitten, you have to deal with it becoming a full-blown infection. So it's invaded your body, it's now in your bloodstream, you've got an infection. There are several stages to the infection based on how much time has passed. So after eight hours, it goes from a um, badly infected wound, or it becomes badly infected. After 16 hours, it becomes a pus-filled wound. And then after 24 hours, like I say, you succumb to the infection and you actually die. So each of these stages has increasing negative effects that you can track on your character sheet. So you'll get messages here, you'll be dealing with nausea and fever and all sorts of negative effects that get worse as more time goes by. So you want to get rid of the infection as quickly as possible. Another consequence of the time frame is that when you do clear up the infection successfully, however long the infection was in your body, multiply that length of time by four and that's how long you're going to have a negative effect called recovering from infection. 
So you have a recovery period even after you get rid of the infection, and that length of time for the recovery is four times how long you were infected to begin with. So if you were infected for five hours before you cleared it up, you're going to have recovering from infection for 20 hours. So try to clear it up as quickly as you can. And how do you do that? Well, similar to the other ways, if we bring up our inventory menu, the infection itself, there's only a few ways to get rid of it. One, your body can naturally fight off the infection. There's only about a 15% chance for that to happen. Unless you have a specific trait that you can begin the game with when you're creating your character called infection resistant. That increases the percentage chance that you're going to be able to fight off the infection naturally and get rid of it without any other things to do on your side. Now, that infection resistant also increases your chances of getting rid of bite wounds. You can uh, recover from bite wounds without any um, consequences, just naturally. So it increases with that infection resistant. So sometimes it might be okay to wait for the six hours to see if it goes away on its own. And then right before it transitions to the infection, then you would apply your disinfectant or any other solution. So just be careful of the time frame. Be very aware of when you receive the bite and track that so that you know that you have to get rid of it before the full six hours goes by. All right, so other than letting your body naturally try to fight these off, how do you get rid of an infection? Well, the most common way is going to be antibiotics. So this is different from the disinfectant. Disinfectant is for bites. Antibiotics is the primary way to get rid of a full-blown infection. You just take your antibiotic pill, the infection immediately goes away, and then you just have to deal with the recovering from infection for however long that's going to affect you. So I don't believe there's even a chance it'll fail. Uh, I don't remember ever seeing it fail. So just pop the antibiotic pill and you're immediately cured of your infection and go about your business. Royal Jelly will also do it, but like I said, very, very rare to get a hold of these. So uh, try to hold those for other purposes if you do happen to have one but also the first aid kit. So if we look at the details, you won't notice anything here. It just says antibacterial medication designed to prevent or stop the spread of infection. So there's no healing section to make note of, but if you go to the first aid kit, 95% chance, and that may be the same for the infection pill or the antibacterial pill, I'm not certain, but you can see a first aid kit has a 95% chance of clearing up an infection. So antibiotics first, First aid kit second, royal jelly third would be the order that you want to try to get rid of this in. Um, and that's pretty much it. You don't really have any other choices. It's either go aways naturally at a low percent chance, um, or you can use one of these items to get rid of the infection. Um, so let's go ahead and do one. Let's do just the antibiotics. So if you watch here, you'll see it's green currently. If I pick the antibiotics and then activate it, Right there, you take some antibiotic medicine and it is now gone. And we're good to go. And you'll see here, recovering from infection. So if we go over to that section, right there. So we're losing some strength and some dex. We're gonna have some pain while we recover from the infection. And like I said, it's four times the length of time that you were infected that that's going to be there. It'll eventually go away though. And the effects are pretty minor. All right, I think that covers pretty much everything you need to know about how to deal with the bleeding, bites, and infected wounds. So if you have any questions about this or any of the other topics covered in the courses, feel free to let me know either in the comments section or you can visit my Discord channel I've got linked below. I'd be happy to answer any questions. There's other folks there that are in the channel that are knowledgeable about the game. We'll be also happy to help you if you have any questions about these topics or any other topics in Cataclysm. We'd be happy to, to give you some assistance. Um, so that's it for this course. I hope you've enjoyed this course and the other courses in the series. Um, please let me know through your feedback options. Like, comment, subscribe. All of those are great ways of letting me know how I'm doing and how to improve. So I look forward to hearing from you via those methods as well. And that's it for this episode. Have a great day. Bye-bye.